Team Keep It Clean. I just love when we get great news. And some great news to start it off is that StandWithUsClothing.com is giving y'all 25% off of these varsity jackets. So take advantage of it. The link is right down below in the description. Now, to our Baltimore Ravens. Everybody, everybody on the 53-man roster was out there at practice today. Now, it was a walkthrough, so it's not a full go hard practice like that. But the fact that everybody was out there, that is a great sign for the Baltimore Ravens because we ain't using stuff like that, but we will definitely take it and we appreciate it. So that includes guys like Keith Mitchell who was limited yesterday with a hamstring injury. And we know with Keith Mitchell, it was concerning, extra concerning, because a couple of weeks ago, he dealt with a hamstring injury that ended his first game prematurely and took him out of what would have been his second game. Uh, so we don't want nothing to happen to Keith Mitchell. We don't want nothing to happen to anybody. Uh, but with Keith Mitchell, we, we certainly ain't want nothing to happen to him, but we're glad that he was back out there. Marlon Humphrey who also was listed with a hamstring injury in yesterday's practice. He was back out there. Again, everybody was back out there. And shout out to Marlon Humphrey with, you know, Punchline Podcast. Uh, and this is good news, bad news for some of y'all that missed out. But good news for the people that took advantage of it. The Punchline Podcast tailgate sold out. Sold out. So those of y'all that got y'all tickets, congrats. Those of y'all who did not get your tickets, I don't know what to tell you. I tried to tell you. Try to put you on before it got sold out. But tickets are gone now, so that's a wrap. But anyway, uh, Marlon Humphrey was back out there. Michael Pierce who had missed the previous two days with a sickness, he was back out there. Michael Pierce has been balling, man. I remember going into this season, Michael Pierce was somebody that I had oftentimes forgotten about, that he was on the roster. I had always thought about Matt Abike and whatnot and Travis Jones too, but Michael Pierce was somebody that I always forgot about. I'm like, man, we do got Michael Pierce again, because remember, he was an undrafted rookie free agent that the Baltimore Ravens signed. So shout out to the Baltimore Ravens for being able to find that talent in the undrafted pool. Um, but... He has been amazing, all kinds of amazing. I was just talking to my guy Jason the other day, and I was talking about how I appreciate it with Michael Pierce. I remember it was early on in the season. Michael Pierce, he was part of a presser, and in that presser, he talked about how um, he talked about how Mike McDonald, Ravens defensive coordinator, how he will find a way to use us big guys. Uh, even on passing downs, because you think about a big guy, a big defensive lineman on first and second down, yeah, rundowns, he's going to be out there. But on third down, usually they come off the field, but he's like, no, he finds a way to use us on passing downs too. And at first I thought that Michael Pierce was just talking. He was just giving a little shout out to his coach or whatever. But no, then I watched and saw Michael Pierce be out there on passing downs. And this man actually got a pass rush. For somebody his size to have a pass rush, you know how dangerous that is? And I mean, it makes it no coincidence why the Baltimore Ravens are leading the NFL in sacks. Whew. And then coming up in this game, the Browns are going to be missing their top three offensive tackles. So that plays into the hands of the Baltimore Ravens. They'll be without Jack Con Conklin. They'll be without Jedrick Willis. And they'll be without uh, Dewan Jones against the Baltimore Ravens. So, ooh, that's... Well, we know what that's like to be missing a lot of guys. We know what it's like for sure. They're going to be missing some of their wide receivers too. So I guess a breakout James Prochet game. We'll see what happens with that. But anyway, uh, Michael Pierce was back, so that was great news. Jalen Armour Davis also. Again, everybody was back. Everybody who was missing yesterday, they were all back. Jalen Armour Davis, he had a uh, sickness yesterday too, but he was back out there. Rashad Bateman, who popped up out on the injury report, he was limited. He did practice yesterday, but he was limited with a back injury. Hopefully nothing going on with that. Again, I think it's just because he's going to be carrying the wide receivers this weekend. Uh, but we'll see. We're going to see. But he was back as well. So these Baltimore Ravens are getting stronger, and that is a beautiful thing. We are, and, and you know what's crazy? What's really crazy that we have been saying that like just about every week that the Baltimore Ravens are getting stronger because they keep getting guys back. They keep getting guys that return to practice, that come through, that show up. Uh, so that has been really, 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 really nice to see. Now, um, in some not so good news, and this is a surprise to me because I really thought when Harbaugh said that they would have an announcement on a Jabo, that we would get an announcement on a Jabo very soon. I thought we would definitely be getting one this week, but boy, was I completely wrong. David Ajabo, who is currently still on injury reserve, uh, Harbaugh said that there are no updates with him at all. So nothing to talk about, nothing that we know, nothing. Nothing with David Ajabo at all. So big question mark there. Uh, a lot of just nothing. Um, and I, it's just it's weird. But I, like, I, I think we, I thought we would have had some kind of clarity by now. Like, I feel like David Ajabo has been gone for a very long time. I don't know exactly how long it's been, but it feels like it's been a while. 
Uh, I would have definitely thought we would have an update. We would have had, all right, well, he's either going to be back or not going to be back. I'm on the on the assuming team of he's not going to be back. I do not anticipate him being back this year. With Tyus Bowser, we are in week, what is this week, nine, ten? Tyus Bowser still has not played a single snap for the Baltimore Ravens yet. Um, so, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. With, with Ajabo and with Bowser, it's very weird because not only are they out right now, not only are they not on the 53-man roster, but we haven't had any clarity on them. Whenever Harbaugh speaks about those two, it's very weird. Uh, he speaks in code. He speaks in a different language or something like that. And we get nothing definitive on them whatsoever. And and not even that everything would have to be so definitive like, all right, they'll be back this week or they'll be back that. But we have gotten absolutely nothing, nothing, no type of updates, no type of, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, oh, the, nothing. And we've even heard reports from like some of the Ravens reporters and whatnot. Oh, with, with Tyus Bowser, he would be working and running on an adjacent field uh, to where the practice is. But I don't even think we've been hearing that recently. So with Tyus Bowser, I, who who knows, man? Who knows? With David Ajabo, who knows, man? But the Ravens just got to keep it moving. They got to keep it moving. When those guys do get, if those guys do get back, all right, cool. Um, at least I, I am very, very grateful that the Baltimore Ravens are in this situation to where they're not reliant on a Tyus Bowser or David Ajabo. They're not dependent on on a Tyus Bowles or David Ajabo. And that's, of course, no offense to those guys, but that's just more kudos to the Baltimore Ravens for how they handled uh, their roster this year. I am glad that uh, it, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, man, Tyus Bowles is out and we really needed him, or David Ajabo is out and we really need We could definitely use them, especially for quality depth now. We could definitely use both of them. But the fact that they are out and it's not hurting the Baltimore Ravens right now that says a lot about this current Baltimore Ravens roster. The fact that now, especially at this point of the season, in my opinion, anything that the Baltimore Ravens get out of either David Ajabo or Tyus Bowser right now should be considered a bonus. It really should. And that's sad to say, especially how the season started, uh, especially with um, the expectations. I know David Ajabo going into his second year, it was high hopes for him. Uh, but he could never really quite get it going. Uh, and then he got hurt. And then with Tyus Bowser, he thought that, all right, maybe he coming to the season healthy, but it just hasn't happened. Um, but, yeah, th those two should both be considered bonus players at, at this point uh, of the year right now. Uh, we hope that they can get right. We hope that they can get healthy. We hope that they can contribute. But if not, it's it's a tough business, man. And the Ravens, they, they got to keep this thing moving one way or another. I know there has been a lot of conversation amongst Ravens fans about what could possibly happen to Tyus Bowser next year because it's contract time. And the Baltimore Ravens, I believe they could save a good amount of money if they ended up moving on from Tyus Bowser. And the way that this whole thing has been, um, I just I, I don't see this relationship continuing after this year. But again, who, who knows? We, we don't know. We'll, we'll see when we get there. Um, but we do uh, certainly uh, hope that Tyus Bowser can, whatever he wants to do, if he wants to play, which I'm sure he does want to play, hopefully his body can get right and he can get out there. Um, but if it's something that's holding him back, unfortunately, which it seems like it is. I mean, last time Harbaugh said something about it, he said it, it got kind of tricky or something like that. So, yeah, we, we just we just don't know. It, it's, it's just crazy, man. Um, but we'll see what happens. So we'll continue every single week. Well, I know the question is going to be asked by the reporters. Hey, any updates on Tyus Bowser? Any updates on uh, David Ajabo? Uh, we'll see what Harbaugh and company has to say. Uh, but until then, hold out hope for both of those guys. Um, but the Ravens, again, they, they got to keep this thing moving. So shout out to Jadavian Clowney. Uh, shout out to Kyle Vinoy. Um, shout out to Matt Abike. Uh, they, then they're the guys that are sort of pricing themselves out of the Baltimore Ravens. Um, they and now that we're thinking about this, I did see this on uh, on Twitter earlier from Brian McFarlane, Raven salary cap, because he knows all about the contracts and whatnot. He said this is Michael Pierce last year on his contract, I believe, because uh, the following year after this year, um, he it's a void year because they re, he said he said that they re, they restructured his deal uh, and they changed. It was originally a three year deal, but now it's sort of a two year deal, so he'll be a free agent next year. So that, that's another big. Big loss that the Baltimore Ravens couldn't do. Like, they could, they could be dealing with a lot of loss this year. 
from a lot of different players. Whole lot of different players because a lot of players' contracts are expiring. Ravens got to make some big decisions on a whole lot of players. So, Ravens, it, it just makes so much sense that you win the Super Bowl this season and then figure all the rest out later. <laughs>